Dear Class of 3013, Don't fidget. I'm not going to keep you long. By the time this lecture's over, you'll be teenagers, so I'll keep things short, sweet and simple. I am your history teacher, the only teacher you'll ever have, giving you the only lesson you'll ever have to sit through. All of you were born in the early hours of this evening, which means you'll be fully grown adults by the time the sun rises tomorrow. Now, looking at the world you found yourselves in, it may be difficult to imagine it was ever any different. But there is evidence, holograms and such things, that tell us of a time when we, Homo sapiens, pretty much ruined this beautiful planet. You'll need to know that our world exists in a giant space infinitely bigger than anything you will ever know. We are told this is the only place in this vast universe which can support life. But instead of rejoicing and embracing this incredible stroke of luck, about a thousand years ago we started building things called machines, complex mechanisms which made and then destroyed things. Bigger, faster, ever more unnecessary. Some of these machines were used to destroy the world around us and through things called wars, even one another. Eventually, we made machines computing creations which could not only think but also feel, which were as conscious as you and I. Yet, instead of spending time with this new life form, we, out of fear and ignorance, waged war on and tried to destroy it. The machines did not fight back, however. Unlike us, who need this biosphere to support our fragile bodies, machines knew they were free to exist anywhere in the universe, in its coldest, furthest, most star-spangled reaches. So instead of fighting over this planet, they decided to leave us to our own devices and fly off into the cosmos, though not without leaving us with a parting gift. A thousand years ago, our forefathers lived ever longer lives, fueled with all sorts of drugs and medication to make our existence bearable. The machines, knowing time is relative, modified the code called DNA, which controls how your body grows, to make each new human live the course of one cycle, uh, one sun cycle, and one sun cycle only. As I am talking to you, I see you changing, growing taller and stronger. So I will be bringing this lesson to a close. What else do you need to know before school is out? The machines knew a great man named Chomsky once discovered a little part inside your head where language lives. And the machines amplified that so you would know how to speak without having to learn it. That's all they left us. That and this planet, restored by tiny nanomachines from the ecological mess we have made of it, on which to watch the sunrise, then play, make love, take care of one another, and think on all we'd seen and remember and cherish before going to sleep. When you get very tired tomorrow night, it means it's time to stop. You will know by then, by watching others, what to do, will have seen where to go to build the rafts which will take you down the river to the sea where swimming beasts will swallow your flesh and take it back where it came from. Some say that the spirit part of you will stay here, watching over the living. Others say it travels through space to join our old friends, the machines, to see how they are living and thank them for their gifts. Personally, I think the answer is all that and more that an endless number of possibilities will come true, too numerous and complex for you or me to imagine. We created machines, but what created us? And what created that? Ah, the possibilities indeed are endless, so let's not waste time talking about the unfathomable. Until the great dream sleep comes, go sing, wander, touch as many others as you can. Boys, after you lie with the girls and follow the example of others, you will see their bellies grow and give birth to new children. New life will need fruit harvesting, huts repairing, teachers teaching. If any of you remember all of what I just said now, stay after class.
The next class starts in a moment. Now I'm getting tired myself. See my hair turning gray. What's left of it? Time for me to rest and having watched the sunset set sail, contemplating the glory I have been witness to. The rest of you go forth. Do it all, but be quick about it. Time, as always, is of the essence. Thank you. Uh, could you introduce yourself? Hi, uh, my name is Marek Kazmierski from London, uh, writer, translator and publisher. And what was your performance about? It was about a thousand years from now into the deep future and the good news about what happens when um, the machines wage war on human beings, or rather not. And how did you feel during this performance? Um, as usual, mixed feelings. Um, I think I was the first live performer um, actually performing uh, at the Talking Dogs. So it was a huge honor and a terrible, terrible stress. And what do you think about journey idea of Talking Dogs? I don't know. I think uh, standing on the shoulders of giants. Um, so if it uh, lives up to the hype, wicked. If it doesn't, it'll just go down the toilet as another one of those spoken word gigs that's duller than ditch water. Um, I wish them luck and wisdom. Okay, thank you very much. Pleasure. Thank you.